Almost any pilot who has had a few hundred hours in the air has had an emergency. An emergency is not hard to handle if you are familiar with your airplane. Familiarization with the right procedures at the right time can mean the difference between ejection or a safe return to base. So let's check out a few of the items that call for immediate action. Here is an emergency that calls for quick action. Engine failure on takeoff. After you are airborne and with insufficient runway left. Release drop tanks. Throttle off. Gear up. Check flaps down. If time permits, engine master switch off. Fuel shutoff lever off. Purge switch to purge. Check harness. Change course only to avoid obstacles and land straight ahead. As soon as the airplane stops sliding, get out and away from it quickly. Here is an emergency where you would have more time to act. Compressor stall. This is identified by loss of thrust, a pulsating roaring noise, engine vibration, rapid rise of exhaust temperature, and loss of air speed. Act fast before flame-out occurs. Retard the throttle immediately to idle. Wait until exhaust temperature decreases. Then accelerate very slowly to desired RPM. Should compressor stall develop into flame out, first cut throttle off. Establish glide at correct wind milling speed for your altitude in accordance with the flight handbook. Leave gear and wing flaps up, speed brakes closed. Remember, restarts are possible at altitudes up to 40,000 feet, but your best altitude is 25,000 feet or below and at an engine RPM of 25%. This will prevent engine over temperature at restart. Prior to attempting an air restart, turn off all non-essential equipment in order to reduce battery output to a minimum. Fuel shutoff lever on. Check engine master switch on. Switch to battery generator. Emergency ignition switch on. Advance the throttle to approximate idle position and watch exhaust temperature gauge for signs of ignition. If it does not rise beyond 200 degrees, retard the throttle and attempt another restart. After a successful restart, turn emergency ignition off. A dead stick landing is another type of emergency you may encounter. Decide immediately whether you can land or if you have to eject. If a landing strip or emergency field is within gliding distance, release drop tanks, retard throttle to off, place engine master switch and fuel shutoff lever off. Trim for a glide at 185 knots with gear and flaps up and speed brakes closed. Remember that for each 5,000 feet of altitude, you can glide approximately 11 nautical miles. Use minimum stick movement to conserve hydraulic accumulator pressure and turn off all non-essential electrical equipment to conserve battery power. Remember, gear up for all but runway landing. But let's assume you have spotted a good runway. When you are sure you can make it, lower landing gear, open canopy, lower flaps as needed, and maintain 160 knots in turn before entering final approach. Extend speed brakes as necessary to regulate speed. If you are undershooting, slow down to 130 knots, which is best glide speed with gear and flaps down. If you are overshooting, slow to 120 knots with speed brakes extended. Ready for touchdown. Turn battery generator switch off. Shoulder harness locked. Stick back. 
Land at 110 knots. Hold the nose up. That's it. You're in. Should you have to leave your airplane in flight, always use the ejection seat. Here is the procedure in detail. Feet in stirrups, head hard back. The first pull on the curtain releases cabin pressure and fires the canopy. The second locks harness and fires seat. Now release curtain and kick free immediately so you will not foul your parachute. In the event the canopy doesn't jettison, pull the canopy emergency handle. Then, if the canopy does not fire, pull the handle on the headrest to arm the seat and eject through the canopy. Landing control of the FJ-2 is good at low speeds with the hydraulic flight control system, but you must always be alert for split-second decisions. If, when you move the gear handle down, the gear will not extend, as shown on the indicator, pull the emergency landing gear handle to its full extension. Hold for two seconds, and the gear will extend. If necessary, yaw the airplane to lock the main gear. If the nose gear is down, but shows unsafe, a touch-and-go landing may snap it into locked position. If this fails, make another approach using this procedure. Be sure drop tanks are released and excess fuel expended. Then plan your approach to touch down as near to the end of the runway as possible. Throttle off. At touchdown, keep the stick full back in order to hold the nose wheel off as long as possible. Ease it down gently before horizontal stabilizer control becomes ineffective. Don't use the brakes if you can stop without them. If one main gear and the nose gear are locked down, but the other gear did not extend, prepare for landing gear emergency approach. Hold the wing up. When it drops, it drops fast and you may ground loop. Get out and away from the airplane immediately. In the event that all attempts to lower the gear have failed, follow this procedure for gear up landing. Leave gear handle up, flaps down. If you are undershooting, slow to 130 knots, your best glide speed with gear up. If you are overshooting, open the speed brakes as required at approximately 120 knots. Use normal landing technique. Stick full back, wings level, touch down at 110 knots. As soon as your airplane stops sliding, get out fast. If during a final approach you must take a wave off, always remember to advance throttle smoothly and slowly to full power and close speed brakes immediately. Stall speed of the FJ-2 is 100 knots, so hold the nose down and accelerate to approximately 165 knots for new approach. Your first actual landing should be easy. You know how the FJ-2 handles and what to expect. Release drop tank fuel before you enter the landing pattern. Now extend speed brakes. On the upwind leg, turn fuel transfer switch off. Check your shoulder harness and seat belt. Armament switch is off. Open canopy below 205 knots. Check hydraulic pressure, normal. Gear down and flaps down below 205 knots. Check your indicator. Set RPM at 75 to 85 percent. Hold 140 knots on the downwind leg. Enter the turn at 140 knots, decreasing speed gradually. On the final approach, hold to 125 to 130 knots. Retard the throttle when you're lined up with the runway and touch down at 110 knots. Study your flight handbook. 
and become thoroughly familiar with your airplane's operation and emergency procedures. Flying a jet fighter is serious business. Your success in operating the FJ-2 under normal or combat conditions will depend on how well you know your airplane. Check and recheck your understanding of the FJ-2, for in the final analysis, its effectiveness will depend on you.